And joining me right now is Mr. C.W. Chanter in the flesh and on video. What's going on, my friend? Doing very well. Thank you so much for extending this uh, invitation to join you on your show. Very pleased yeah. to be here. No problem. Thank you so much for spending some time with myself and the audience. And uh, my friend, I got to tell you, you know, I've been wanting to interview you for a rather long time, but I know there's been some complications going on and I kind of wanted to wait to the, the proverbial smoke settled. And I think now is a great time to do that. But before we do, I just wanted to quickly ask you how on earth all this sort of uh, began for you, you getting involved in uh, certain people's, uh, you know, not I, I shouldn't say you got involved in their business, but this sort of thing sort of dropped into your own lap here, in my in my opinion, and uh, you sort of uh, felt a certain way, and other people felt a certain way, and they sort of went after you, and I'm just kind of wondering, what on earth was it that really offended this party enough to actually go after you? What do you think you said that pissed them off enough to do that, in your opinion? It could be anything, well, right? What'd you say? I said it, it could be it, anything. It, it, for what it's worth, th this is really what it comes down to. In this public space, we it was a foregone conclusion for me based on the fact that I'm not the first person on YouTube. I'm not the first person that commented about other people on YouTube. Um, all I ever did on YouTube was take what people had said, either in blog posts, Facebook posts, comments on Twitter, or in public facing presentations on YouTube and analyze them either watching a YouTube video and going through taking notes and then providing commentary or playing clips and commenting on them, all things that were wholly, absolutely under the rubric of legal fair use and taking what the content that people were discussing, the nature of the things that people were claiming to be true about what they were saying. There can be no doubt that taking them at their word, that what they were talking about was newsworthy. And if they were telling the truth, then talking about that truth and the pros and cons of it or the the implications of that information were absolutely worthwhile and relevant to people and therefore it was fair use. And if they were being insincere or making things up and purporting that it was true, the, the discussion of that and the possible revelation of those things by a fair analysis of why that material was more likely than not incorrect or couldn't possibly be the case was for the best of the public and therefore in and of itself fair use. And even if nothing else, it was just, you know, transformative work, it was commentary. Nothing I ever said was with, you know, any sort of, you know, wanton disregard for the truth. I never accused people of, of anything other than, look, this can't possibly be the case or this can't possibly be the case in my opinion because of this. You know, what people ended up, you know, suing me over was they didn't like that. And they didn't like the fact that after a while, because of the kind of nuttiness of what they were saying and doing, that in aggregate, more than one person came to think that this thing was you know, comment, you know, worthy of comment and worthy of discussion. So I can't tell you why a given individual who's not myself did something. I'm not a mind reader. I could tell you that I was sued. I could tell you that I was sued in a jurisdiction where I had never been. 
I've never been to this place. And therefore, under the laws of the United States of America, there was no reason to sue me there. Why they sued me there, I know what the justifications on the paperwork were. With all due respect, I think the justifications were were nonsense. And I think that there must have been some other reason, probably convenience for something else. But it is what it is. It was a life lesson. It was a life experience. The, the case was dismissed. Um, and we... It is. It's a life lesson, and we have to see what will happen next. You know, there's. It's. I've over. It's over thirty thousand dollars in attorneys' fees, and as a result of it, it 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 took three years for the simple motion on jurisdiction to be resolved. And in that time, I was more or less effectively silenced from, you know, discussing. You know what this party was continuing to do, even though what that party went on to continue to do was, you know, kind of actively oftentimes talk about me in the most, you know, outlandish right. ways. But this is this is what can happen, you know? And they donks you, by the way. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, when it comes to things like, you know, doxing, we are all on a on a a new trip all of us on planet earth this technology and the companies that are running this technology the internet you know google facebook twitter x whatever you want to call it right we are all every day weekly daily monthly however you want to bracket the time in a changing world and having to rejigger our estimations and our expectations of personal privacy and redefine what these terms like doxing and all these things mean. Yeah, without a doubt, you know what I mean? Where I was talking about what people were doing, um, people who were defining themselves as modern day prophets and holding themselves out in their own public disclaimers as public figures. I was CW Chanter, and they chose to, uh, you know, I allege engage in activities that were specifically designed using, you know, front organizations to, to, to breach that. I mean, this individual, you know, it has actively continues to say that they are going to uh, contact the New Jersey State Bar Association and and send the materials, even though anyone could go to the New Jersey State Bar Association website and say. The purpose of the New Jersey State Bar Association, you know, ethics complaint department is not for people to contact them and say, this New Jersey attorney, we think is a real, you know, D-bag. Sure, but even by doing that. It's for clients in New Jersey who think that their New Jersey attorney screwed up their case. Correct. But the fact that he did, the, the fact that this individual has been doing that or attempted to do anything like that is pretty crazy. That's yeah, pretty crazy. You know, we, live in, we live in a world. We live in a world with kind of crazy people, especially because this person is, is purporting that they are, you know, were selected to. They were selected by, and adv- they've been selected multiple times by different alien or future underground human civilizations to be the spokesperson because they are such a super empathetic, awesome, kind person because they're so good because they're so good correct and yet they are sending flagrantly you know right. lies to the new jersey state bar association who i assure you don't care like the new jersey state bar association has not contacted me once like and it is what it is like if this person wants to keep on wasting their time and making a case against themselves for you know, grounds for me to to, to sue them, but it, it, I have no desire to sue them. I have nothing. Like it's like, are we the bad guys? I'm the good guy. I'm just like I pray for this individual, and I just say like this negative energy that this person. You can't complain about lawfare if you're the one suing people, right? You just move on, like do you know. 
be be the person that you say that you are. Like talk on behalf of the, I don't know, like who the Anshar, the golden, beautiful, ancient people of whoever. I I don't. It's been a while since we heard any good news, so right. I can't remember who who we're supposed to be talking about anymore. You know, it is what it is. I agree with but you on that one. You just try to live, you try and live the best life that you can. You just try and remind yourselves, you know, it is what it is. You just got to take the lumps. You got to take the experiences. You got to try and try and make the best out of it. What you know, a world! Like, what a world we live in. This is what can happen. So these frivolous lawsuits are just going to keep coming your way. In other words. I don't, I don't set my intention that they will. I mean, look, I mean, the, the guy can no longer sue me in Colorado. That's no longer an option. And the fact of the matter is that the reason he was able to sue me in Colorado just has to do with kind of circumstances to do with Colorado law. If he wants to sue me in New Jersey, where I'm an attorney, that's like, you know, Hitler going into Russia. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, there's just like, it's, it's, it's bad news. Like if you, if, 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 if he wants to, to keep on suing, first of all, like the lawsuits against other people have been dismissed and he's got his lawsuits against other people have been dismissed, but counterclaims against him have not. So while he thought that it was, he was appearing on the internet saying, I sued these people and now these people are gonna learn this lesson. After the end of three years, he's gonna have to deal with my motion for attorney's fees. And he's gonna have to deal with, while his primary claims against a lot of companies have been dismissed, a lot of their counterclaims against him have not. And so, you know, he sued a multi-million dollar company and his claims against them for the most part were dismissed, but their claims against him were not. So right. it's like, you know what I mean? It's like when your friend gets drunk at the bar and then picks a fight with the guy that's three times his size. Right. And then the guy agrees to go outside with the <laughs> boy. Yeah, it's not going to end well. Yeah, it's not going to end well. But... I don't want it to not end well. I just want people to, I would, you know, if, like, if I could turn back to him, <laughs> I would right. prefer that he, had, he would have followed my advice and not sued anybody in the first place. I, oh, you know boy. what I mean? But it is what it is. If, if the guy wants to double down, that would be a shame for all parties involved. I would hope that he would have learned his lesson and not sued. I hope, I, I, I don't hope, I don't assume that these frivolous lawsuits will keep coming my way. It's my hope I set an intention with the universe that the frivolous lawsuits will cease and desist. Right, right. And if they don't, then I'll have to deal with that life occurrence. We'll deal with whatever happens. Sure. You know? I just think it's a waste of time, but it seems yeah. like that's really what he's after, just time. Wants to waste everyone's time with this. I'm not a mind reader. You know, when I thought I was a mind reader, I thought he's just talking. There's no way he's going to sue because why on earth would you screw up your whole shtick? I mean, I can understand why you would say that you were going to sue, but I, could, I couldn't understand why the heck it would be. It, like I said, I, I misapplied rational actor theory in assuming that he would act as a rational actor. When he sued, I was like, I knew that this would kind of happen. I knew that we would end up here. But I don't know if if he did, but I don't know what he's after. I mean, I, I think that, you know, there's some people, it's like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Correct. You know? I'm, yeah, that's uh, another thing I had in mind. I'm like, what, what is he after exactly? What could actually be his motivation for all of this? obviously you're not a mind reader or else he would yeah. be on, or else he would be on talk circuit or on, you know, on, on Oprah. If I was a mind reader, With John I wouldn't be on Oprah or talk circuit. I would be <laughs> behind the scenes, Michael, <laughs> that's doing true. all sorts of stuff. Well, that's true. That's you know true. I mean? Boy, like, they. you know, we, you, you would never know who I was. <laughs> I would be, I would be the phantom presence. That's true. Behind the scenes, never having been known. And certainly, 
not you know dicking around on youtube yeah right? not not doing all this not doing all this that's true the live day, you know what i mean i hear you please uh, well you know what i, I can't read mine i feel like I, mean? I i feel like i even have to apologize uh for all this that you're you're dealing with from, from the universe is telling me you know it's telling me right now to say i'm i'm really sorry you're dealing with these parasitic uh, entities from another dimension well you know, it's it's you, first of all number one i honored the impulse in you to apologize but i want to say to you it's really not necessary and as far as parasitic entities from another dimension if they're parasitic entities from another dimension you know like parasites are you know living things and they're just doing what they do it's like haters are going to hate you know what i mean that's what they do. That's true. Parasitic, parasitic entities from another dimension are being parasitic entities for another dimension. Like they're just like doing, you know, their thing. This is what's going on. And it's like energies interchange and energies exchange and there's cause and effect. And well, none of this actually helped him in the end. I mean, that deposition video was a mother. That was just, well, you know what's so crazy is that the guy's still talking about suing people and I keep on trying to, like, here's the thing. I mean, the guy, I mean, I tell you, like, you know, the guy wants to paint me as the worst guy possible and keeps yeah. on accusing me of the worst crimes ever. Right. As I'm giving him free legal advice, right? I'm telling you, like, I keep on trying to say, even here I'm giving out free legal advice. The guy has admitted in multiple public forums to having given false testimony under oath in a, in a court deposition, right? That's pretty hardcore. And I say to him, look, dude, your only job now is to never, ever give your wife an excuse to divorce you because she knows you did that, right? It's like, you know, it's like, you know, people talking about like suing me. It's like you're suing anyone again and moving this. You've admitted to lying under oath. It's like you're just, you're just like he. Well, he self-incriminated himself in a court of law. Correct. Ever. Like, I, well, yeah, just yeah. don't understand that. Like the only thing you're doing in a court of law is basically, you know. Well, he really, let's, let's put it this way. He he really screwed himself up by doing that, obviously, and of course. Yeah. There's so many other people in the circuit, by the way, let me just put it this way, that have referenced his work to validate any kind of uh, thing they were putting out there in terms of UFO conspiracy and lore. You know, you have people like Captain Mark Richards, and I've talked to Joanne oh, Richards. Well, I saw that. I saw and that a lot movie. of that information, a lot of this information from our friend here that we're talking about was, of course, taken from the Martian Marine. Okay, I mean, okay. I've, I've talked to these people before, so I, I kind of would know better than most other people out there. So I've done my, my homework. I, I think I would know best. Yeah, well, that, that is, you know, here's, so we talk about this, and, and, and this is stuff that I talked about while, I, while he was, while this, the pre-legal shenanigans were going on. Right, right. Is that this whole notion that, you know, what he seems to be really attached to is this and what he seems to be keep on wanting to have survive is simultaneously have this stuff be real but also copyrightable intellectual property right right and i kept on saying and a video game yeah, yeah and a video game oh you know it wasn't until I started a role-playing game channel that all of a sudden games became a real big thing for the guy. I don't know if there's a connection. It seems like he's been. Uh, it seems like he's been watching you. The, he's been busted watching me. He's shown up late to pre-exist to, to pre-scheduled interviews and then been caught listening to the tail end of, of my sign-off. Ooh. Oh, we've got him all. Oh, look. But I'm not happy about that and i'll tell you why part of the reason that i keep on not wanting to push things and people are like you should counter sue him i'm like that is because if you look this guy doesn't seem to be able to let things go and i've always told people i don't i'm not really interested in upsetting this guy i don't say that i love this guy because i'm trying to lie to him i do love this guy i want the best for him and the best is 
non-escalation. Yeah, you Everybody don't want to. You don't want to. Yeah, you don't want a I, Richard Ramirez situation on your hands here. I, I don't think he's Richard Ramirez. Thank God. I don't think, because Richard, I'll tell you nothing. Richard Ramirez kept his kept was able to stay around, taking people out for a while because he right. was able to. When I said this guy, this is this guy's got game. He's like he's like he he lied under oath, right. thinking that lying under oath was an intelligent Oof, you move might. that he was going to be able to keep this thing going. As it, bearing in mind that secret space program is something that people have been talking about since before him. Correct. Right. This is like me coming out and being like, you know what? I'm going to copyright. Tetris. Uh, an eyeball in the middle of a pyramid. Or that too. Yeah, but no, but has anyone copyrighted it? And it's like, bro, like, no, that's not going to work. What I'm going to copyright is, check this out, Secret Society. Oh. Yeah, no, bro. Like, we got a slam dunk here. Yeah, you know what I'm going <laughs> to copyright? Illuminati whistleblower. Oh. That's mine, Leo Zagani. Uh -oh. Uh oh. That's mine. I'm the Illuminati whistleblower. What the? You can't cut it. And especially if, dude, it's in the legal paperwork. If you were telling people there was an actual, first of all, here's the all these characters. Okay, you're telling me right. that there's a government program and the name of the secret government program is secret space program are we on a rocky and bullwinkle show <laughs> right the name of the company is acme company right what's the name of what's what's the name of the secret uh space viewing uh device it's called the chronovisor is it really now you know what i mean oh i know what you mean it's insanity. But, it really is. But, okay, but well, here we are, though. But here we are. But here but we that's are. That's what I was thinking. Like, I was like, you're going to, you're, I was thinking I was the smartest guy in the world. Be like, yeah, right. You're going to sue me. You're going to sue me for defamation when you're the guy telling these stories, seeing court. And meanwhile, I got served. I was like, oh my God. It actually okay. happened. You know what I mean? Like, but then, then again, I told the guy, like, congratulations. But hey, but hey, look. I but, grossly overestimated your willingness. But hey, to, like, but look, but look at this. But look at it, look at it in the end this way. The man pretty much self-incriminated himself in a deposition and kind of screwed himself over in the end. So think of it at, 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 like this. I win in the end, even though you're going to keep continuing to harass me and do what you think you're going to do. But you kind of sank your own ship already. Well, listen, let's I mean, be honest, on, like, Michael, I got to tell you something like, you know, the words have power like he, he we got it. We got to aim him in the right direction. We got to aim him in the in in the in to the direction of freedom. This is true. He right? he can still look good in the end, though. Let's let's put it this way. He no, no, it no, just no, no. just he <laughs> has to get away, relax. Exactly. Relax, say, let it go. Calm down. Let it go. Yes. It seems like we use our words to say unless he lets it go and stops harassing me and other people. I'm not the only person he's he's harassing himself. That's true. Right. Look, I'm smiling. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I see you. It is what it is. He's got to let. Like, he's got to let it go. I know. Well, There's a lot of anger there. There's a lot of anger. That, look, and all the and like I said, the reason why I, I tell. And, and hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. For the record, guy. for the wait a minute, wait a minute. For the record, for the record, how yeah. hard were you really going at this guy? Be honest with me. Were you were you really, you know, were you really giving him the business? Be honest here. The, look. You have to remember this. There was a definite time when we were definitely going back and forth. It was, did it get and nasty it though? These things like we were when we, when you mentioned him doxing me. Yeah, there was an organ. There was a group, an organized attempt that we knew was was he was that behind, came from him. Yes, he correct. Put out photos of my father. Yeah, where we knew, and the 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 implications were that he was going to increase it. That's pretty nasty. I have you know, in my possession, basically admin, admin admissions from his former business partner stating that these documents that he was trying to submit or has may have submitted to the New Jersey State Bar Association 
contained, um, you know, constructed testimony designed to make me false testimony saying like the bad things about me. And, you know, he would make implications that I was, you know, this is like at the height of Pizzagate, he was making implications about direct, trying to directly correlate my activities with, you know. Oh, my God. You know, you know, uh, you know, people like, you know, Hillary Clinton and the Dark Alliance and yeah. whatever. And you know what the implications are. So if I was coming at him hard sometimes, I would tell people, the guy was, you know, giving me a reason to come at him hard. And this is also a guy who was taking money from people. And I would see in the live chat that people were waiting for, you know, you could, this is the thing. It's, it's the oldest game in the book. I'm not telling you that there's a savior race coming. I'm not telling you that I'm a Messiah figure. As they're telling you, Basically, I'm telling I'm uh, getting secret communications that are only coming through me from a group of people, entities that have your best interest at heart, that are capable of intervening and doing things and are waiting for us to go one, you know, ascend. And, you know, so it's like a cover story. It's like it's like the people that constantly appear on TV or the radio that say that this is not financial advice. But, but right, right. If I were you, silver and gold, silver and gold, or this stock looks really good. But it's not financial advice. But you know, it's a it, the it's not financial advice. I'm not telling you to wait for a savior. I'm not telling you about a savior race. But and then here comes the the pitch for all these things as they're soliciting donations, as they're telling you come see me at this conference, and knowing that. It was at times when people were hurting or that you were knowing that there were people that might be giving their last bottom dollar or something. Yeah. And and to know also that people were coming forward to me and telling me sometimes really kind of, you know, bad stories, you know, we, you know, about, you know, this, that, and whatever. And it's just, like I said, you know, we definitely started beefing. And he's going to say that what me or this guy or the other side did was way worse than what he did. And I'm going to say, you can say whatever you want to. You're the one that sued people. You're the one that made allegations. He is a person that always likes to go around saying they accuse you of that which they do. To which I'll say, I never accused anyone of being a PDF file. Correct. Right? That's pretty dark. That's pretty dark. Right. Without evidence, too. Without any, without, with nothing. Yeah, that's a crime in but itself, in my opinion. It's, it's definitely a crime. But... They accuse you of that, which they do, is a thing that he likes to say, and he's accused people of every other person is an agent of Satan. Every right. other person is doing this, that, and the other thing. So if they accuse you of that, which they do, make of that what you will. I've been called that I'm a few not, times, I've never by the way. accused anybody of anything. I've never accused anybody of ever, anything. I've told people, this is what's available online. This is what I've seen online. This is what somebody brought me. Here's what I have. This is what I'm calling it. If you don't want to call it that, if you want to call it something else, then okay, call it something else. And that's what I'll go to my grave saying was the activity that I was engaged in and the things that I did. If someone wants to say I did something else, if something more than someone wants to say that I was involved in something else, then I, I leave them to their proofs, as they say. And it is what it is. It is what it is. I know. I agree with you wholeheartedly. It's it's kind of crazy. You see all these people that, you know, they go after you or they want to sue. Uh, for the record, I just want to make it known to everyone out there that I don't sue people. You know, I just handle things at a Dairy Queen parking lot, to be honest with you. It's kind of a all joke. Right. It's kind of a joke, by the way. 
I would hope so. Yeah, I don't well, actually do that. Talk about handling things over ice cream. That's a that's a fine way. Yeah, exactly. Ice cream. There you go. Discuss things over ice cream. Yeah, that's how you do it. absolutely. That's how we handled it back in the day. Correct. I well, I hear you, but uh, you know, it's never really should get to that point though. It shouldn't. If people, the whole if legal people, lawsuit thing is also should it should have never even gotten there. I mean, you guys just sort of exchange words. I know, but I mean, I, I think some people just take it a little too seriously. And then oh, look, and then and look where we're at now. Look where we're at now. The, the the whole thing was ridiculous. I mean, the first of all, you have to bear in mind that at, t- at a time when when the, when this thing went down, if you look at like the aggregate of all my videos together, right. there were like a couple of thousand views each. While this person was purport, I mean, look, I'm a firm believer, and you see all these videos. Ninety nine point nine percent of all views on YouTube, I think, are. Are bots probably not the bots that people hire i think yeah. just like youtube is I, all like i'm a big proponent of the day i, I have to agree that. with you i think the algorithms are all screwed up i, I think it's all I, bs it's all bs but this th- these are individuals that were like having like three hundred thousand views four you know all like off the chart view but they were worried you know about I mean? little you exactly it's like yeah. it's like it's like leds i always used to say it's like led zeppelin being like Vanilla Fudge said what? Yeah, now they're mad. It's insanity. Right. You know what I mean? No, I hear you. And that's what, I, that's what I'm trying to paint the picture for the listener that, and I'm not trying to disparage you in any way. I'm just saying you're like a normal dude. You know, you just have a regular show. You're a humble guy. You're just doing your thing. And then here comes this individual from their ivory towers to attack you. It would, absolutely. It just doesn't look, it just doesn't look good. Not at all. I mean, look, I mean, I, I don't think I don't. And I don't like I said, I don't. And it, it, it hasn't it hasn't. It did not turn out well, quote unquote, good. Exactly. It, did, it didn't turn out well. Ironically, you know what I mean? Talk about ironic uh, uh, turns of phrase. It did not turn out well uh, for the person, I guess, who thought that that it was a good way to go. But I, I could have told them that as an attorney at law, I would have told them, I said, you know, 90 percent of the time when people come and say, especially when they're when they're pissed off when their motivation is emotion i say if you're looking for justice if you're looking for righting some sort of wrong if you're looking for satisfaction you're not looking to sue you're looking to go go build a house for the homeless go yeah. pray go go figure something out for yourself because you're not going to get it here. Only thing that's going to happen in, in, a, in a lawsuit and in a court of law is an increase of heartache, aggravation, costs, and the only people that are going to end up getting paid at the end of the day probably are the attorneys, especially in civil litigation. You know what I mean? You're not going to get whatever it is you're looking for. Right, and so, look what and look what happens in the that. yeah. It's and not it, yeah. It's not it's it's not worth it. Look what happened, and now of course as a result. He's no longer invited to all the major talk circuit uh, outlets now. This is this. That's a that's a big dent. That's a big dent there. And, you know, and I'll tell you, it's 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 I I can't tell you if the the lawsuits happened at the end of really at the end of his journey. If you want to know the God's honest truth, in my estimation. Well, yeah, he was kind of fizzling out already by in terms of popularity. And and the reason the reason he got to where he got to really was nobody told him. You got to share. The pot. Right. Nobody gets to be the only person that gets to speak to the bluebirds of happiness. Correct. It's called G.I. Joe, but there's more than one dude. And in fact, there's a couple of girls on the team too, right? There's more than one person by definition in the, even if, I don't think this stuff is real, but even imagining the scenario, hmm. it's impossible to believe that there's only one 
whistleblower for uh, one Illuminati defector, that there's only one defector from the um, venti and back program, right? We don't want to get sued again. Yeah, don't. Copyright, copyright protected. Don't hey, get I had, sued by Starbucks. I have no idea what's going on. Right. I take no responsibility, by the way. For... I, I gave him a mind control pill to, to prevent them from being alive. Um, right. But this this individual just wasn't obviously able to ever accept the fact that there would be other people that would be able to say, you know, I too was part of this, you know, mission command center or what part of this program or that program. And now we see them today. And now we see them today. And it's like, okay, you know, Michael Sala is interviewing this guy, you know, JP from the, it's talking to the ant Kings and Queens. And I, you know, but I, I could have told, you know, this person from the beginning, like this, no one turns into a millionaire being a, um, giving testimony about this stuff. When I went to Contact of the Desert uh, 2019, you could see Travis Walton spent the majority of the time sitting by himself. Right. Because, you know, yeah, they made that movie, but that movie came out like in 1993. That was like 30 years ago. It was 30 years ago, and he took too many lie detector tests that he blinked on, and it's just an old story. And he's a good guy, by the way. He's a, yeah, I love him. I met him. I met him. He's been on my show. Guy. He's a he's a fun guy. Yeah, I, I know the guy. bunch. They're all cool. They're all, all of these guys. Why? Because all of these guys essentially are what? Unless you, I mean, look. Every, you know, some of them probably. You know, there's some guys who are not so nice guys, but for the most part, sure. of these guys, these guys are probably. My analysis is probably hurt or damaged people who for the most part, come up with some story to make themselves. It's like the secret life of Walter Mitty. They, in their heads, they know they've got something beautiful about themselves. And they just need the world to see it. So they come up with some... Extraordinary story. story. Extraordinary story to match that or what they think will match that beauty to get the world to pay attention. And for me, they're just like works of living art. They're just like the guy at the saloon telling the crazy story that everybody knows is, is, is full of it. Sure. And that, that takes away from correct. And that takes away from those that have actual skin in the game. Those who actually experience something extraordinary themselves that really can be explained by science to a certain degree, which is, you know, a strange anomaly of sorts, very rare, but they do happen every now and then. But people that take advantage of uh, others out there in the talk circuit and those that want to be on TV, there's a lot of them in that, in this field, you know, they want to be on and they want to be in movies. They want to sell books. They want to do all that. Absolutely. Look, I mean, there's a lot of people who don't want to work for a living. And there are a lot of people that have fantasies about what this world of ufology, conspiracy theory land can do. Look, with YouTube and the advent of YouTube, it's very easy with the filters and the lights and the effects. The music, yeah. The music to make something look like a TV show. And then you see people at these conferences and you, it's like, you know, you shoot it a certain way. You, you shoot the little hotel conference stage at a certain angle. It makes people look like they're giving an address in front of giant mm-hmm. stadium sometimes. Right. And it creates this impression for bigger people than that, life. Yeah. Bigger than life sort of illusion. Bigger than life. And right. so people, and I would tell people when I was, when I was doing my YouTube channel, I would say like, you want to come out and you want to be this whistleblower look it's an artificial thing and it's it's not going to last and and really what you're going to most likely do is really 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 screw up your life and i would tell people i go the 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 analogy is not really even the music industry 
the analogy, really the perfect analogy for this, these scenes like contact in the desert or, you know, not saying anything about the particular people that run these things, but sure. this world of ufology and stuff and conspiracy theory land, it's really pornography. You're going to be the one, if you want to be the whistleblower, if you want to be the person that wants to throw your hat in the ring and tell your story and put yourself up as the person that's going to tell these tales, talk about your abduction or your recovered memories or whatever, you're going to be the one on camera identified and having people listen to your salacious story or look at you. It's going to be the people behind the scenes that are going to end up making the most money. Their their you their channels are going to grow. That are going to get the majority of the Patreon subscriptions. That are going to be end up being invited backstage. Are going to make the connections. Are going to get the executive producer deal at right. something something. And by the time you've done your third appearance at this, if you get to that level. You're going to feel this pressure to start saying more and more More crazy shit. Yeah. More and more crazy shit. And then before you know it, you're probably going to end up, you know, blowing your mind because all that's going to end up happening is you're going to do or say something that people are going to say, there's no way that that happened. Or you're going to say something that's going to make you feel totally compromised that you can't keep up with, or you're going to follow, you know, a trend that, takes you in a completely different direction. You're going to completely estrain yourself from your friends, your old friends or family. And it's just, it's just going to be a nightmare scene, you know? And we see it time and time again. Yeah, it it is. It's, it's really, it's, it's really an old story. And I know, I know some of these people, by the way, that have been affected by uh, doing what you're talking about here. And, you know, this is their livelihood and this is what they, this is how they make a living doing the uh, talk circuits and, some of them have fallen into doing drugs, and I know a few individuals out there who got caught Absolutely. up in that. And it, it's pretty tragic, but yes, a, a lot of these things go to their heads, and it affects their friends and families, and it, it could really take you down a dark path. But, you know, it, it takes away from those individuals who actually have experienced something, and I believe there are those out there, but there's very few, in my personal opinion. But, you know, one, right. very, one very known person in terms of uh, ufology I feel who is, is kind of, um, I guess you could say, uh, genuine in my opinion, is uh, Gary McKinnon, by the way. For okay, if you're familiar with him, I feel um, like he, I, I, yeah, I feel like you know he did do some time for his crime, and he his claim was the whole off off planet officer thing after he hacked into what was it some sort of a Pentagon computer of sorts, something of the uh, NASA network. NASA Network, yeah. If I remember, yeah. And he's from North London, I remember. He did this at the girlfriend's house. I remember the story. And I, I've spoken to Gary very briefly, not on the program, but uh, I forgot where the hell I, I talked to the guy. But um, anywho, I feel like there's some credibility to uh, that story. And it's always reported as the biggest military computer hack of all time. And this was back in 2002. I'm not sure if you believe that story wholeheartedly. Well. Here, here's what I here's what I believe about it. it definitely, what he definitely hacked the computer. He did something that's though. Why, yes. That's why he was investigated. That's why they wanted to extradite him to America, right? Correct. It's the question. The questions I have is: there's a lot of people, and here, here's here's where we might find we might find disagreement as to what the importance of what he saw and what it was. It could mean a lot of but things, though. That's yeah, a problem. Yeah, could be a lot of things. But where we yeah. might find agreement is is people taking advantage of real things that happen because there are a lot of people that have used that story to build to validate their other. False narratives, Correct. No, and I right? agree with you. And I yeah, and I yeah. I'm holding a, several books here that you know mention things of that nature. They mention other people. You know, they even mention uh, Emery Smith in oh, some God. books. And I'm thinking like. I don't know if you really want to use him as a reference in any book, but here we are. I met Emery Smith, you know what I mean? Oof. And he, he's a guy that, like, without a doubt, when I met the guy, un, with, un, with 100%, he was, he was along, in my estimation, was along for the ride. I mean, you know, there are certain people that when, if you can meet a guy and you could say to them, I know you are 100%, completely full of it and they can look you in the eye and they'd be like 
that's cool. Whatever, dude. You just know. And they can be like not offended at all. It's just like you just know that they they know that they're along for the ride and along for the trip. I mean, this is another person whose stories are just like my kids. Like if I tell people all the time. It, I mean, this scene is so it's a scene that can almost sometimes make your hair want to pull your hair out because like Emery Smith or the other guy that we were discussing, if you were to sit my 13 year old girls down, I have twin daughters and you were to tell them these stories <laughs> that these people are tell, tell people and you were to tell them verbatim what these people say, my kids would be like, people believe this stuff. Oh yeah. You know, it's, absolutely mind-boggling it is i mean if you were to put this stuff i mean this is like plan nine from outer space stuff i mean this would be like a movie if it was a movie it would be so bad that it's good like i mean the emory smith testimonials it's like it it would fail if you were describe trying to sell it as like not just describing medical procedures in a hospital let alone medical procedures that were being done in some sort of alien biosphere, the cutting edge of exoscience, whatever, however you want to describe it. I mean, it's like I've seen people at McDonald's make a filet of fish sandwich with more analytical <laughs> skill and just, you know, you know, veritas. Yeah. I mean, it's just the stories are ridiculous. But when I went to the when he was speaking at Contact in the Desert. The line to hear him speak was around the block. Really? Oh, absolutely. Wow. He, was the, he was the hot new thing. He was the, he was he was the, the headliner. He was the headline act. The headliner. Damn. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, are you kidding me? Well, there's, but, always, there's always one in line for that, that role, by the way, in this field. The, and, it, and it seems to be like, the 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 wackier, the crazier the story, the more likely people are sometimes willing to to get on board with it. Or sometimes it seems like if they're just told that this is the the latest greatest thing. And sometimes they're fun way. though. I, I mean, I I bring on people all the time here that I, I don't think are the most credible in my opinion. I I find some of their experiences just so outrageous that I, of course you would would want to appear on this program. I mean, I love it. There's part entertainment here on this program, and I've never, never shied away from telling people that because that's just the truth. And I'm going to be honest with people. But of sure. course, there's some bullshit that you hear from uh, certain individuals on this program. Of course. No Absolutely. Way. No, I mean, yeah, exactly. What a shonker, right? I mean, holy shit. I hope the roof doesn't fall off now. I hope God doesn't come and strike me. I mean, better you know, not. better hope. I know I have my fingers crossed. I hope that doesn't happen, but. I mean, Lord, some people really are gullible and they believe just about anything they hear. And it was wild because the last time I was at Contact in the Desert, you know, I'm at this conference and there's a, you know, one of these round table discussions and you have people like uh, Linda Moe and Hal sitting oh next to like Graham Hancock. And I'm like, what universe am I living in where these two individuals are even going back and forth for any seconds of time and it's it's graham hancock and linda mo and how just think of it that way just for a moment let that marinate in your mind i mean that shouldn't even be happening well i mean look i mean i i know a lot of people like hold <laughs> holy graham shit hancock in, in, in high esteem I mean, my my thing with graham hancock is he might, he's certainly more credible than, than Linda Malton Howe, but by far, just, but by, he, by far. but he also has a whole set of, uh, different yeah, sort look, of I things. Mean, a lot of, it's just, a lot of his stuff is just beautiful speculation. It's Pretty just, much. It's just great stuff. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But what a strange mix of characters. I, I'm already forgetting oh, the names of cool. other people. there. very irrelevant though, but you know, I went out there to sort of review the event of sorts. Uh, you know, they wanted me to go out there. People so watch, I did. Thing to say, you got to go at least once. I tell people exactly, and I've been to a number of them, and and they're always fun. But at the end of the day, at the end of the the day, there, I always think, you know, I feel like a lot of these people, uh, part of their their intrigue, I think it also stems from some sort of escapism 
Uh, I'm sure you probably came to that conclusion a long time ago yourself, but I feel like a lot of these people are trying to escape something, my friend. I think it's I think it's escapism. I think it's a desire to belong. I think it's it, for for different could people. Could be a I few think things, yeah. Different things. I think there's. Um, also, because they're around like-minded people as well, I've, I've heard people say yeah. that the older the older folks I've heard say, "Oh, it's time to go. This is the last day. I feel sad." And I'm thinking, "Oh, it's because you know you're around people like you, so then you feel you got to go back out to reality, and then that's you know that's it." And I I, I think for some people it's generational. You got the you have you have the older baby boomer hippies who it's like a kind of revival of the 1960s vibe that right. I think some of them get. And I do, I think a lot of people feel people sometimes are get they get isolated. So it yeah. is with like like-minded people. So it's I oftentimes whenever I was there, I was only there once, but I always had this impression that people were waiting for some mass connection to happen. And you get the feeling like that people would just want to live there, want something to, to be more permanent. And yeah, then you start you start to understand why cults exist, people. by by the way, right? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> yes, it, it's expectations. You you go to a thing like Contact in the Desert or Conscious Life Expo, and you go there, and from the minute you're there, the expectation of what you want to happen is always just around the corner. That something's about to happen. The connection's going to be made. The revelation's going to happen. You're going to meet someone new. That something's going to happen. But it is what it is. And you know, unfortunately for the if you if you look behind you know the scenes for the people that are that are there it's just it's the same old people over and over again and and i don't know like i, I look They're at the line for the last couple of years and it's the same people yeah. and they seem to be getting you know a little bit stranger and stranger in their testimony and what they say over over time and this, you know, I, I, I don't know, you know what I mean? It is, is I, I think also sometimes this, the scene might be changing. You know, I, I think it, as, as the baby boomers get older, uh, I think, it, you know, the popularity of this stuff may be, may be fading. It'll drop, I'm, I think. I'm very, I'm very much into, into this, this concept of nostalgia loop. So I think everything, you know, kind of follows patterns. And I think we've, we've been looking at, you know, patterns of, you know, people got, you know, into, you know, the X-Files and yeah. stuff. There's a cycle it's going like, on right now. Exactly. And that's, yeah. Yeah. If you see it right now with all the whistleblower stuff right now. And uh, yeah, of course, I revisit lots of uh, stories from the past as well. Those that are still oh, alive. And again, still again, there, there are those people out there that have definitely experienced something. But what it was or what it is, we probably will never figure that out. But that's what makes things fun. I, and 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 that sense of fun is is beautiful, and I think as long as people embrace that sense of fun, then if I they think can we're differentiate, okay. if they can differentiate, because if then differentiate. if then they get led down the, the wrong path, of like our other good friends out there. If you get led down the wrong path, there's problems. And I like I say, whenever anybody gets really excited about things, like really to the point of aggravation or upset, I say, look, if like we talked about like galactic parasite beings from another dimension. Or right. People talk about, you know, the world is a prison planet or this. I, think, I meant that as look. an archetype, by the way. No, no, no. But, absolutely, no, but no, no, I, I hear you. some like, people you know, probably good. believe that literally, though. Oh, they do. And, so, I, and I would say, I you go, know. look, I go, if you read ancient Buddhist texts, it's like they're, yeah, okay, the world's a prison planet. But, you know, even these things guarding the, the, the Illuminati, Anunnaki, Draco space guards trying to keep you imprisoned and in a loop i go they're just you know doing their thing man and it's like if you don't want to do the life review and you want to move beyond and don't go in the light okay don't go in the light and go beyond that whatever you want to do like it's all just a trip like just don't get upset like just don't trip out man like just don't freak that's all you got to do is just you know don't freak like just do your best to breathe in breathe out keep moving and it is what it is. Like, you know what I mean? This will probably be not be the thing that kills us. Like, right. Just go with it. Another you know? thing you have to figure out eventually in life, you, you think you have all these sort of enemies out there. You, you think you have this real sort of beef with others. But then you start to slowly understand um, later down the line that the actual enemy is actually yourself. 
Well, that's like the, 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 a lot of a lot of um, ancient Hindu and Buddhist texts go to that. It's like there's no, it's this concept of Advaita philosophy. It's there is no separation. There is no other. It's just it's just you. We're, we're all one. We're all one. Thing. We are all, all one. Correct. With each other, you know what I mean. It's just, I lean that yeah. sort of way though when I get angry at someone and want to go viciously at them. I think the actual anim- enemy is a, the inner me inside of me. I, I can grok that because I've always said the thing that upset whatever triggers you the most, and this is including for myself, whatever really triggers us the most is that thing which we identify or you know maybe even don't identify, but is within ourselves. You know, without a doubt. Um, if I look at the things that you know, may have tripped me up or triggered me or got me upset were the things that most aggravated me about the people that I used to used to kind of go after all the time. Do do you regret it, though, by the way? Uh, Honestly, do you regret that you've uh, gone after these people in such a way or or everything's like, you know, it, it is what it is? Well, like the thing about regret is, you know, it's you life is a process. So there's no real point in I got here on this trip, you know, step by step. If there's gnosis or knowledge that I've arrived to, you know, I, it's it's it was through this experience. So, and whatever's happened, happened. There's no real value kind of in regretting it. And you have to remember that I have gone through periods of time on YouTube you know, post this or during this process where I said, you know, it would have been better off if I had never gone off my original mission statement and hadn't gone involved in going after this guy or going after that guy. Yeah. And oftentimes in response to that, my audience or certain members of my audience have said, don't you understand and don't you know that it was because of you asking these questions or doing this or was discovering your videos that I first started questioning or first started noticing that there were problems or you woke me up or you did this or you made me realize X, Y, or Z. So do I regret it? No, because it was a process. And it's also, it's like, you know, you got to speak truth to power, even if it's not a power, even if it's a peer. The process of suing me for saying your story is full of shit yeah is saying nobody can tell me that that i'm not allowed to just say whatever i want to say without reproach and without uh being reprimanded or without being criticized no one has that ability and no one should suffer under that delusion or illusion could I have done it this way or could have done that way? I am who I am. And, and like I said, life is a process. I don't necessarily always do the same things I used to do. But like I said, do I regret it? What's the value of regret? I don't necessarily regret it. Uh, I, I, I don't like that I got sued. But then again, I'm not the one that chose to do that. Right. The other individual chose to sue me. The, he, they chose to react in that way. There's nothing necessarily... It's like if if I shot someone and the cops arrested me, it would be a foolish argument for me to say they chose to arrest me. There's no necessary latch to my behavior and suing me. It's not a necessary conclusion that the only response to what I did or what I said was to sue me because the other person could have easily stopped watching my channel And I can tell you, there were people on YouTube that used to hyper aggressive me and I used to go nuts thinking about them and what they said and what they were doing in regards to me. And guess what? When I unsubscribed to their YouTube channel and I stopped following them on Twitter or they blocked me or whatever, they just fell out of my whole world. Yeah, it it went away. Right. They just went away. Correct. Understood. Yeah, yeah. And that 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 so, happens to some people out there. I mean, they don't respond uh, very well to this uh, black box in front of them that means so much to them. It means the world to them. 
uh, to the fact that uh, they would actually go after you legally. I, it's just, it's, it, it's just an inability to accept, I guess, changes and transformations in the world around them and an inability to understand that suing people in a court of law wouldn't be uh, a healthy or good response to that, to that. I think that if the person had sought more legal consultations, they would have, may have realized that. But like I said, it, it's it's not, they have their life to live, I have my life to live, and I can't control what other people do. All I can, all I can try to deal with and control is my responses to that. Right? Absolutely, so yes. We, we do what we can do, and we just, we, we keep on keeping on. And I've seen a number of your videos. You, you talk about all kinds of things. I do. You know what I mean? Correct. You know, you go about playing uh, video games. I've seen, I've seen you even talk about toys a time or two. A time or two, you know, I, I, that, that was a, that was a phase. I mean, I, I did it. I, you know what I mean? It, it comes and goes because it's, it's post this whole thing, you know what I mean? That, we, we rejiggered, we, we looked for different focuses, we looked on what we were gonna do next. And the best thing was realizing that I don't have to play the YouTube game. I'm no longer trying to, I'm no longer, not that I ever necessarily was, but I'm no longer, definitely no longer trying to, to figure out how to get a million subscribers like you like when we we discussing making this interview happen right you know i, I contacted you i said oh by the way you know i'm no longer using the the that the channel main chapter. right this, but most, a lot of people would be like what do you mean like i just basically walked away from a channel that at one point had over five thousand subscribers and i just was like kind of hell with it and a lot of people would be like for the longest time that was really kind of hard to do but it's just an acceptance of it, it's not giving up. It's it's realizing I came to YouTube to 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 experience communication, but the way that systems like YouTube work, you come to just communicate, and before you know it, almost subconsciously you kind of get rewired into right. playing this other game of That's right. how do I get more subscribers? How do I get more views? How do I do this? How so, do I do that? So would you, would you say so that weird. you yourself also got, you took, you took this a little too seriously. Would you make that assumption? I wouldn't say that I ended up taking it too seriously. I would say that, that I definitely caught the bug. I see. I definitely experienced. You cut the rub, as they say in the biz. You, you do. To a certain degree, uh, to a certain degree. You know, we, 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 it, I learned though, and it was an experience and it was a worthwhile experience because without having had that experience, I couldn't come and then talk to people on YouTube and say, come to YouTube, but remember why you came to YouTube and know that it's a system that wants you to do certain things. For example, YouTube for the, will demonetize and punish you for the exact things that create the most views on YouTube. What YouTube wants me to do, and it's taught me subconsciously to do, is to be the most aggressive CW Chanter possible. When CW Chanter was making videos just talking about my own takes on life, yeah. my own takes on my own religion, my own takes on faith, and this, that, and the other thing, the views were stupid, right. right? But when I was going after other people, and when there was back and forth, and when I was going crazy and doing yeah. all these things and making an ass out of myself, That's the, yeah, then, then you got views. Bam, they go that. But yeah. at the same time that that happens, that was also the stuff that gets you demonetized. It's all the salt the stuff that, that gives them an excuse to, to kick to you yank off, your shit. Yeah. Save, save, save their life, save them from liability. And I would try to explain to the audience, like with the things that 
you want, and also it doesn't necessarily serve the audience well. I go, look, it's they're also programming you to be like, you know, kind of crazy people at the Coliseum, always, you know, screaming for thumbs down, kill the other guy, kill that, the other guy. That's internet culture, though, in general. That's, I mean, I, I know so because I do a live show. And right. if I act outrageous, which I do during a live show, uh, well, that's because I'm entertaining two audiences. For those who don't realize it by now, there's a... I have a large podcast uh, audience, much larger than that on YouTube. But the the animals on YouTube, they're much more aggressive. They want to get hit back and forth with a couple one-liners. They want me to say very offensive things. And I do. I'm a a victim of that. Do you like the way I said that? Quote, unquote. I'm a victim of that, by the way. There you go. uh, For the record, uh, you know, this is my testimony. Uh, I would say that in deposition, by the way, I'm the victim here, but yes, my, but yes, my friend, uh, you know, I gotta be kind of an outrageous personality and at least say things that are controversial and quite offensive. And I end up doing all that and hitting all the check marks when I do a live show. But that's because I have an audience that knows that we do a serious show, but once it's live and on the, the YouTubes, that's when you gotta be a little bit, a little crazier because people online the internet culture, they all have ADD, they all have all these issues. You, you have to hit them back and forth with all kinds of shit to make them stay there. That retention time is vital. And I have the ability to keep people there for at least 20, 30 minutes, which is uh, pretty decent. That's a, it's a good sort of bar to reach if you could keep uh, someone their attention span that long. So it's usually... For me, I notice this, is that we'll... In all seriousness, you you can YouTube, all these things, YouTube, Discord, Twitter, X, call it what you will. Every program, every thing, every activity plugs into you and you plug into it. And it's a journey and you have to watch yourself and you have to watch how you interact with these things and you have to watch how you evolve with the experience. Right. The way that you deal with things, when I had 500 subscribers, and then I had 1,000 subscribers, and then I had 2,500 subscribers, and then I had 5,000 subscribers, and it looked like it would keep growing. Definitely. Not that I lost my mind or whatever, but you you think about things and you start to think about things differently than when you first turned on the YouTube and said to yourself, eh, I'm, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. A hundred percent. And I'm just going to giggles and I'm just going to start talking. This is true. Right? There's like some sort of a thing that happens to you when you're online. You kind of inherit some strange sort of form of autism almost. Different things happen to different people. And you can develop different, whether you want to call it developing different forms of autism or whether different mind virus, your personality can come out. Right. Like I said, we, you know, we may have said it, you know, in in the pre-show interview, or we may have, you know, talked about it. You know, it's an experience and, and, and we, or we may have talked about with doxing, you know, it's like, Everybody, new technologies come. And as we interact with these new technologies, or the kids interact with the cell phones, we don't have necessarily the neurological programming or tools to know how to expect how it's going to affect us or how it's going to affect us over time. The only thing we really can do is, is just try to watch ourselves. Yeah. And when we start to notice ourselves, maybe good, losing the plot. Good point. That's that's a good point because there's no long-term sort of uh, study about what's going on with us with radiation, with Wi-Fi signals, with uh, staring at the screen for this long. Who knows what the long after effects will be from uh, this result of always doing what we're doing. There's, there, there's definitely that, but beyond that, then not necessarily beyond that, but but maybe even coexisting with that and running along parallel lines. The time that we spend with it, there are oftentimes people that will, 
I, I here's a great example. How fast do people in these online spaces rush to? They've never seen each other in person, but within one or two appearances with each other on what it used back in the day, Google Hangouts or in these live streams or whatever, right. they're calling each other brother and friend and I love you, man. And it's just the relationships, you know, parasocial relationships or people are in live chat and some people you might see, you know, returning audience members. Oh, you know, radio show host like Howard Stern might have a person that, you know, or Opie and Anthony might have people that have recurring callers that call in every once in a while. But if you see a live chat, you see people on a continuous basis and oh, yeah. respond, they respond to you back. We got them here tonight, probably. Yeah. They'll be here. You'll, yeah, you'll you'll see people and they'll see you and there'll be interactions. And relationships start to develop that we haven't had. And, you know, I'm 48 years old, but even at 48, I'm learning almost like a kid in high school showing up to high school for the first time, like, you know, meeting kids that, you know, from different, you know, elementary schools or middle schools that I haven't interacted with before right? or showing up at a new college campus. It's, it's, it's new and people aren't, aren't cognizant of the fact that it's new to them because they feel like I'm an old guy, I'm an adult. So, the, you know, I, I know what I'm doing. I, I know how to deal with life or I know what's going on. And, you don't necessarily know what's going on. You don't realize that it's new experiences, that it's a whole new ball game, and that you got to be aware of the fact that, you know, you may feel as though because you've known this person and had some form of communication with them for maybe even three, four, five years, that because those interactions have been texts or just 30 minute little sessions where you see one little slice of their life or just one little slice of them. You don't know this person at all. That's true. You don't really know this person at all. And the fact that it hasn't occurred to you to ask yourself or to realize that you don't know this person at all, yet you may have divulged personal so things yeah. or, 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 you know, you know, told them to get love them, all these things. All that stuff happened so easily, and you weren't even checking yourself, despite the fact that you consider yourself an adult or know yourself as an adult. And it's happened to every single person that is listening to this program. It happens. Yeah. But that's life. That's the new life. Because this is new. Keeps on changing. This is new. And, uh, you know, we we are of that generation where we also grew up almost behind the computer, very much like the generations coming up. But it's even more aggressive with with them in, in, in that department because of how advanced certain things were. But, uh, can you imagine uh, growing up with the technology we have now? I mean, that's pretty crazy. We we would get into all kinds of trouble. Let's be honest. Oh, I, you know, I would, I'd be, I'm guilty. I would admit that right away. I, I, you know, I was warped by cable television. I cannot imagine what internet at full blown internet access with the internet we have today. That's crazy. Shit would have done and by the way let me just ask you this i i hope you don't mind me asking a personal question here but you said you have kids by the way i do yeah. and do you like monitor their internet time do you monitor the material they they consume anything of that i'm sure you probably would have to these days yes as as best we can because i grew up i I grew up looking at like rotten.com you know i was looking at gore all kinds of crazy shit yeah, no, that's what I say. Like, you know, you're you're a younger cat than I am. Like I said, I'm 48 years old. Yeah, and I think that a little was, younger I than was you. I warped by just cable television. And, we, you know, guys, my generation with, with daughters say to ourselves all the time, like, we don't want to know. Ooh, yes. What the what the young men or whatever right, that, right. that my daughters wanted to hang out with what they've been what they've been <sighs> seeing it's, it's just I mean it's just mind boggling. That's one of the things, that, um, and I I hope you don't mind me saying this, but you know that's one of the things I I always considered in my mind. Like if I had a daughter, I'd be like, oh my goodness. No, Oof. and and 
And, you know, and, but, you know, I'll tell you something, I have friends that have sons and they say, you know what, you're concerned about your daughters and the guys they would hang out with. What do you think that I'm worried about my oh, son? Oh, I Brent? know the son. Yes. I know even worse. I would say in some cases. It's, it's just, it's just, and like we said about the adults, we used the example of adults exposing themselves and not realizing what's happening. Yeah. The, the children, you have interests you have desires, you have access, but you do not have the intelligence to understand what yeah. is going to happen. It's when, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've been at 12-step meetings, and they say at the end, there's a closing prayer, and they say, you know, we say a prayer for the the child, the, the young person that's going to pick up a bottle or a pill or a drug, uh, not knowing, uh, for the first time not knowing, what's going to happen to them. Uh, this is life. This yeah, is the that, world. That's life though. You know? Yeah. Right. This is life. We, we, we don't, we, we don't have don't, any say we can't control a lot. Yeah. We can't control like, we can't control like everything. Said, you, know, you can communicate, you know, like I said, yeah. you, you try to monitor things, you try to control the environment. Let them know, understand. And yeah. it is what it is. We're on, we're on the trip on planet earth, you know? Yeah. It's a scary thought. Because life is, is, is life is goddamn weird, you know, oh, let's be nice. honest. Yeah, it is. And the fact that we were, we we're even like communicating in real time right now, you know, I'm staring at a screen. Yeah. We could hear me in real time. You could hear me in high quality audio right now. It's just sweet tones to your ear. Right. The whole thing is a trip. I mean, it's the whole crazy. Thing is a it's crazy. Trip, right? it, it's a trip, man. I, I mean, uh, I think about these sort of things like constantly. I'm constantly thinking, you know, we're like on some spinning ball or a flat uh, earth if, if you're a flat earther out there, depending on who's listening. But yes, we're on this strange <laughs> plane. Don't don't forget about the concave earth. Or, yeah, that too. But it's just the fact that we're even communicating, that we're experiencing what we're experiencing. That that's enough for me right there. Yeah, no, look, I mean, then, like I said, you know, you know, it's like there's some people that will start thinking about that and get freaked out. It's like, you know, it's, it can be transcendent, like, you know, be grateful. It's amazing, you know, and pretty humbling. And just, just be, be, be grateful for being this side of the dirt and still having your eyes open and being able to experience. That's all I think about, you know, I'm just happy I wake up every day uh, and just experience what we're experiencing. And that's all I really enjoy right now. You know, I've been thinking about a lot of that. And I'm happy just to be alive, my friend. That I that's what I lately more and more I say every day on this side of the dirt is a victory. You know Correct. what I mean? Like that's what like people say, like, oh man, I can't believe you got sued. I can't believe this. I go, you look, you know what I mean? Like I said, it's like, you know, when when I at while this thing was still hadn't been dismissed yet, I, I have like, you know, good friends who be like, Oh yeah. man, I just can't wait for this to be over. I just I can't believe you're going through this. And I would say, I go, look, hold on. I'm waiting for this bullshit case to be dismissed. Right. I go, there are people, there are people in the clank, right? Locked up. Locked up. Waiting, waiting for to be to be heard because they can't afford bail or whatever. I go, this is like small potatoes. Like, you know, believe you me, there are people, you know what I mean? Like, you know, waiting to hear if they're if they're gonna if their name is gonna come up on the friggin' like lung donor list. You know what I mean? Like right. you know, I'll take this one. There, there are people with bombs. There's worse right things. Now. Yeah, I mean, you could have uh, been. Yeah, you could like be in the Ukraine the right now, fighting a war. Roll the dice. Just keep on trucking, baby. Exactly. Uh, again, I, I was. I don't think you heard me, but I was just saying. Imagine if you're like in the Ukraine right now. I would. You pick a place. Ukraine, Gaza. You know what I mean. Just be There's thankful you're places, here. You right? know, that's the way yeah. I think about it. Yeah, whatever is happening in the outside world. Just uh, be thankful that you're still alive and uh, kicking and you're not getting blown up by a drone somewhere. Yeah. Which is the case for a lot of people. I mean, I watch a lot of crazy videos out there and I've been watching a lot of footage of uh, Russians and the Ukrainians and lots of um, Russians being blown up by drones. I've been watching people getting shredded up online and just really high quality video. And I'm just like, holy shit. So you're still this watching Ron.com? No, no, no. This is a different place. I think this is like Funker, I think it's called. 
I don't know, man. It's all you like I mean? it's all crazy military footage. It, it is. It's uh really dark stuff. I, I would not. It's Funker three fifty dot com. Shout out to those boys. But yeah, there's a lot of military videos of uh, just people getting blown to shreds, and it's made me think. Um, you know, I've always been desensitized to a certain degree. I've been seeing cartel videos. I've been seeing all kinds of gruesome things online for the, the longest, but seeing uh, drones now and seeing them just annihilate people on both sides it's made me like not ever really want to be pro-war like at all anymore and yeah no I, why would you yeah, yeah don't yeah don't you know yeah don't, i've been like all about war. i've been all about like yeah let's just new this so and so i don't even care like no, i i've no, been no, on no, that no. route i've been in that world for a long time but I again you, just man. just I, recently yeah. seen more of it for as long as i have now it's made me think of like, you know, this is a little too much now. Technology is scaring the shit out of me. And of course, America is collecting all the data from all the footage that I'm seeing. And, you know, they're experimenting with all their toys out in the battlefield, gathering info for the next big one. That's what that's what's going on right now in the Ukraine and Russia conflict. Our government's taking full advantage of it right now. The military complex really having a field day with all the info they're gathering from this. And believe well, me. I did- they're gonna make a lot of. They're gonna make a lot of money coming up with with another conflict. You'll you'll see. Well, here's what here's what I would say. Here's my suggestion. Don't don't watch that stuff because you know you are what you eat, and if you're watching people getting shredded up and and you're watching that stuff, not always, not always. All that always. stuff is going on in your brain. All that stuff's happening. You're recording it in your brain. It's like happening in you. This is true. And, you know, so you watch watch other stuff and oh, of watch course, other of course. Stuff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not going to make that stuff not happen, but you could read about that stuff and get the data and the, and the analysis and the intel, but not because seeing just the, the visceral violence of it, the trauma of it is is not going to. It's not uh, good, but it's made me it, it's made me realize that uh, there's got to be a better way. Oh, there's always a better that's way. What, that's what I mean, made me. Uh, yeah. like, the, the violence is just is just is just is just terrible. Oh it's yeah, it, do it's just it's crazy. I, I you just don't want to see what it looks like uh, today. It's it's pretty gruesome. Yeah, no, it's like yeah, violence and warfare is always terrible. Like people getting shot and beat up, and yeah, yeah. traumatized. It's, it's not good. No, 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 it, it's awful. No, 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 no. Very awful stuff, uh, boys and girls. I would advise none of you to go to that uh, website, by the way. But um, yeah, my friends, I'm glad to uh, hear that you're in good spirits and. Yeah, you're pretty level-headed. Everything is fine. You're not uh, worried about any of this nonsense. The outside world not having an effect on you, which is important in, in, in these times. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean. It has an effect on me. I, mean, I, I, I care about what's going on in the world, but you know, you can't let it affect you too much. You know what I mean? Correct. Yes. You you yeah. can't be too uh, like my you know I have a co-host Mike Hideous, and I love I Mike. Love Mike we, you we, know all, what I mean? I, we all we all love I, Mike. I love, yeah, we all love Mike very much, but you know, I tell him on the show all the time. You know, he gets really uh, emotional about some things. He gets yeah, real fired yeah, up. He gets he gets very fired up, and I tell him you gotta like not get so emotionally invested in some of these things because you have no control over them. And how? So, I, like I say, I know Mike Hideous. I knew Mike Hideous. You knew like, him. I, yeah. I, should, I, should, I should quote that thing from Gladiator. I didn't say I know him. I said I knew him. <laughs> well, I, I back in the day, I, I played bass in a goth band oh. called Erato Mechanics back in Jersey, and uh, so I knew him from that scene. Like back in like thirty years ago, I pretty, he probably wouldn't remember my name, but uh, yeah. So he he's always been a trip. What a uh, goth band did you play in? I played in a band called the Urato Mechanics. We put out like one CD, like back in the day. But it was like it was his it was his pick for album of the year. Very good. Like nineteen ninety six for like the EC Rocker or something. Yeah. It was like a local lag he was writing a, a thing for. Yeah, I didn't know. I know he was like a re, a writer of sorts, a reporter for uh, some magazine uh, for a while there. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I think that's pretty badass. I, he'll listen to this, by the way, he'll listen, he listens to the show right now and then. There you go. Very nice. Of course he won't remember you. He won't remember. He won't remember, he won't remember a lot of things. That's why we love him. What's not the love? Absolutely. We love Mike a lot. And a uh, shout out to uh, your band, your 
former bandmates uh, I, do, do you keep up with them by the way because you know i played in a band when i was like in high school and uh <laughs> just recently a lot uh all three of us like there's a guitar player a drum there's one more guy that none of us have talked to he's like the guitar player that was uh like the rhythm kind of guy and no one knows what what the hell happened to him but we are friends all three of us the singer and the drummer i was the bass player so it's funny you say that you played oh, bass. bass player. okay there you go absolutely uh but yeah i i was just wondering do you keep in touch with any of these people Hell no. I haven't no. seen that. I, 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 um, and then it's just, you know, the years go by. Yeah, like of I course, said, like, course. you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's because I, it was, I, it, I grew up with them. You know what I mean? I, I, I grew up with them when I was like really young. So we have this connection. And not yeah, everyone no, has that. Not everyone has that. I understand. No, no. I, this was a band like, you know, like I got together with these guys who was way past. It was later like, on in so life. Was kind of. Past high school, yeah. Okay. Were, okay. I was in the band for a little bit and. They continued on. It was Joe. Joe is the guy that that uh, 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 Mike would remember. Rado Mechanics. You might remember the the CD and uh, the Joe. Joe played in a band called uh, Sweet Convulsions. It was it was. I like that. Us. I like that yeah, name. That's pretty good. Good stuff. Very nice. Very nice. Very cool, my friend. And uh, the last thing you were telling me was you're you're not really using your YouTube channel anymore. You're kind of focusing on something else. Well, I'm not using the main, the the regular CW chapter YouTube channel, but I still have, I am the one who works here now, my secondary YouTube channel. And I also have a Blueberry Wolf Bridge, a no intro RPG. I sent you those links. Yeah, you sent me the links, but what, what are those, uh, what are you going to be uh, dealing with on these channels? You know, Just anything, really? I'm, I'm not, I got to tell you something, brother. I've still, I'm still kind of doing, you know, some of the same old stuff. Uh, I don't, you know, necessarily go after people like, uh, you know, I used to. Uh, really what I've been doing for the most part is this. The, the I'm the one who works here now is is basically considered my kind of my vloggy kind of site. So if people are still interested in just, you know, hearing from me and hearing my kind of just day-to-day -day discussions and stuff, they can check that out. And the uh, the Blueberry Wolf Bridge is is where I kind of you know talk about uh, tabletop role playing games like stuff like Dungeons and Dragons and stuff. But I incorporate um, what I've been talking about the most is uh, nostalgia loops, and um, they're incorporating them with uh, aspects of uh, notions of uh, communal time travel and solo time travel. I, I did a recent video with someone that you know, uh, Walter Bosley. Oh the yeah, Walter. Walter Bosley's channel. I like him. Where, yeah, Walter Bosley's great. Where we talked about this, it's just basically the notion of um, building off this notion of nostalgia loops. That basically everything that we're encountering in mass media society, especially since the year two thousand, is basically just a repeat and a rehash. And UFOs, by the way. So yeah, he's right. There's that's a cycle everything's a cycle right so using these cycles we can repeat by tuning into the media of yesteryear only listening to by concentrating on only listening to say for example so we're in the year 2024 20 years is the 20 year nostalgia loop is a very powerful one don't say blank and back we don't want to get in trouble <laughs> Um, so if you would only listen to music from 2004, only play books, uh, read books from 2004, read comic books from 2004, watch movies from 2004, watch TV shows from 2004, and do your best to do that for an extended period of time, days, weeks, if you could, you might find yourself dilating time and you might find yourself looking around and saying to yourself, is it 2024 or is it 2004? We've been exploring that concept. And lately, something really interesting has been happening based on uh, David Wilcox's discussions about the solar eclipse that happened on April 8th. I had been reading the synchronicity key that he had published in 2013, 11 years, an odd number, 
But it was while going back on an 11 year nostalgia loop while reading the synchronicity key that I've been on for a while that I heard the announcement that the lawsuit against me had been discharged. And we Mm -hmm. have to remember that the lawsuit is from the close associate of Mr. Wilcock. Oh, I don't know. It is what it is. It's He's made a lot of money, by the way. Uh, David Wilcock made a lot of money. A lot of money. That's why he's in Colorado in that uh, nice estate there. Nice estate. You know, it's funny. On a recent video, he caught himself. He was like, I, 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 did all, I used all my money for the aid of humanity. I didn't go buy a big man. He's about to say oh. to go buy a mansion. It's like caught himself. He slipped. Almost, yeah. He slipped. You know, be careful. Yeah, that's a, yeah thanks for here, sending me that, by the way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my friend uh, do an, uh, an analysis on that, a reverse speech analysis. I have a friend, uh, John Kelly, very much in the game. I'm going to tell him to chomp that clip up there and uh, give us a whirl. Yeah. Well, if you like reverse speech, David Wilcock is always, he's, he's always a big fan of, of what I call TMI. Team Too Much Information tells us everything. Oh, yeah. If you want to know what's going on with David Wilcock, don't worry. He'll tell you. Listen to his live stream. He'll tell you, yeah. There you go. We know he's he's got problems with the IRS, you know what I mean? But his, his his money problems might be soon over because on a recent live stream, he told us his company has an order coming in from an African nation. Hmm. So, you know what I mean? That, that Prince of Zaire might have, a, might have, might have, might have, I don't know, but hey. Hey, as you said, I'm, these things I'm come in, sure. as, as you said, these things come in cycles. And right now, if, as if you can uh, imagine, both are, are both of these uh, characters that we talked about, Wilcock and uh, this other gentleman here. They both have been making a resurgence online, doing these live shows on YouTube, doing interviews now. Are they doing interviews now? Both I, of them I know are. That, oh yeah, I, I saw the one where uh, I know a lot of people are coming back from the past. Uh, yes, I there's the cycle again. It definitely a cycle. Who, who is it I saw? A guy, you just interviewed a guy that had, had been gone for a while. I can't remember his name. Bob uh, Luca, maybe. Who? Was it Bob Luca? Not necessarily Bob Luca. It was the guy that, that had encountered the um, on the beach, the uh, black... What's his name? Who? Which one? Ro- uh, Robert Stanley? Oh, Robert Stanley. Yeah, yeah. He's, been, he's, he's kind of like a regular here on the program. Was he a regular? I thought he just he thought he had gone for a while. I, well, I, I for a while, for yeah, for a while he was gone, right? And um, yeah, he he was he left the scene for a while. He wanted to do my show one last time, and you know he's like, this is gonna be the last one, and that only lasted for so long. Uh, he he appeared on Coast to Coast AM with I think the late Ian Punnett. And I remember telling him after he did that interview, I was like, oh, I'm sorry you were on the program with Ian, of all people. Uh, I know he died, and it's bad to say that, but I'm just talking about uh, the way he was on on, on Coast. Not a big fan of Ian, never really was. Uh, but yes, rest in peace to the man. No, no personal issues with me. I just, you know. I don't even know who this guy is. It doesn't matter. But I, for those okay, that listen, they, they'll know. I, that, agree, yeah, they, I have no idea who the guy was. Oh, they'll know. My the listeners, they know the, these people. But uh, yeah, Robert Stanley, he, he's, you know, I like Robert. Of course, he's kind of worried about all kinds of things right now, especially AI. Uh, that's one thing he's really, really in fear of right now. Um, it is what it is, you know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, a lot of people are in fear of a lot of things. And, you know, I, I remember not long ago, I, I think I caught some of your live show and you were talking about um, another show host by the name of Ryan Gable. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. What happened with that? What, what was the, the beef? You know, I, I've, I've talked to Ryan before. You know, he, yeah. he's doing his own thing out there. I, I, I don't hate the guy. I'm just curious what, what, what happened. Well, it, it, you know, nothing had happened particularly between me and Ryan Gable. It was, it was me. It, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. Look, Ryan Gable is, I don't want to use labels that people don't like. He is a historical revisionist when it comes to certain events related to World War II and the actions of Germany against a ethnic minority oh, they. and their actions in concentration camps. That's it. I, I mean, see. look, 
and I had I had an issue. There was a there was a um, I was friends with another YouTube content creator, and unfortunately, it, it came to light that the YouTube content creator had not disparaged me, but had had engaged and gave an interview in which they had described their history in YouTube in a way that basically made me feel as though they had whitewashed me from history and basically made themselves out to be someone they were not. And it was just basically personal between me and this other individual. It had been on the record for many, many years, post Contact in the Desert 2019, where I had first met Ryan Gable. Oh, so so now, there's a long history yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. I had met Ryan Gable in at Contact in the Desert 2019, where he had, con you know, we had met at Contact in the Desert 2019. And yeah. He was like, I don't like this other individual that you don't like. And I was like, that's cool. And it was like, we should talk. And I was like, okay, yeah, no problem. We definitely should talk. And we've had a photo taken of, of each other together, right? Right. And um, then he got some, you know, had had not protested, but had asked questions of an individual named Jordan Sather. Oh, boy. That was an associate with another person, whatever. Yeah. But subsequent to Contact Desert 2019, I had looked into Ryan Gable and, you know, had, had realized that because he had this position regarding the Germans in World War II, and I had done, look, I had done my research on Ryan Gable. He's a historical revisionist when it comes to this issue. And I had also done other research about him that basically said, like, look, there are people that have different opinions about me about different things. And there are people that whose difference of opinion about certain things get to the point where we're not going to be able to hang out. It's just like we're not going to be able to have a fruitful discussion about things. It is what it is. And I try to limit that. And I and I try to be like, there are people that I would want to be able to be like, try to extend that circle out as far as I could. But it just got, it just was, it wasn't like I had sent the guy an email like, F you, we're never going to tell you. It just, it, had, it just was what it was. Then what had happened was this other individual that I didn't like, basically it turned out had, a set at one or had more than one interview and hangout session with Ryan Gable. And I basically had just made a video where I was like, you purport that your channel speaking about this other YouTube content creator who was a friend of mine, who we had exchanged. I had given, sent him a birthday present. We had been like, you guys are cool. Us, we, were, we were really cool. And that's I why I, I'm going to be straight up. I felt like this dude had stabbed me in the back when I had read this interview because I had been picking him up and you know, I just felt it's part, it's just personal. And he's a human being. He's entitled to his opinion, his take on the situation. I'll just tell people what I think about it, which was, I felt stabbed in the back. It was what it was. He doesn't have, you know, it is. And it's, it is what it is. And it kind of goes well, beyond, it, it goes beyond yeah. like, uh, obviously for context here, uh, it goes beyond the, like any kind of like joking manner of sorts or anything satirical. This was something more along the lines of a serious uh, conviction of sorts. Well, no, in this, let me tell you just basically what happened. So what ended up happening was I basically said, yo, you said that your channel is about x y and z right ostensibly about you don't like people that talk about this 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 and this but you have more than one interaction with this guy ryan gable who and then i pulled up ryan gable's youtube I, uh, his website where he was talking about this and his books where he's talking about the same stuff that look artificial intelligent black goo He's got a forward on his book that was written by uh, Kevin and that, you know, it just it, Ryan Gable is at, in the Venn diagram of a lot of the people that me and this other individual had previously been on the record as saying these guys are full of it and full of crap. So I had said, yo, what's up? And that's, that's all I had said. In other words, th this is a conflict of uh, individuals being anti-Semitic of sorts. Yeah, 
Okay. I mean, it you could have just it, said that. It's okay. And that, and that, and that, and and the term anti-Semitic is one of these things. Like, I, I just say it's like it's it's and it, it and it basically and it wasn't even just anti-Semitic. It was, it's all cost and I. I mean, it just is what I it is. I mean, like the guy, these guys on the record. I mean, it, and it is what it is. So I said that, and so and then and then there was a back and forth, and then you know Ryan Gable and me had a had a brief back and forth on X, and then that was it, and so that that was it, and and it was what it was. So it wasn't like I came after Ryan Gable. Understood. I yeah. just basically came after this other guy and just basically said you're a hypocrite, and it wasn't just that Ryan Gable was was a Holocaust denier. It was also that Ryan Gable is into. X, Y, and Z amount of subject matter that this other individual had also previously said was bullshit, full of shit, crap, and and he just now he for the record for the record he just basically denied um, what exactly was it for just for context that you found to be completely inaccurate and just uh, bullshit that he said about what about anything in terms of the Holocaust what was it exactly just so I know. So what what he had he basically made a podcast that yeah. the highlights of which that he had time stamped and indicated right. was I don't want to um at the risk of reporting things inaccurately. Okay. That's and fair. because the the my examination of this material is attenuated in time, I will say this. At the time, I was satisfied that Ryan G- and I had was satisfied that I had reaffirmed my previous analysis that Ryan Gable was a Holocaust denier because he had made affirmative statements in type. Not only did I play the material, the highlight reels. But I had also seen him put in text that the Germans had been had to deal with an invading force of individuals that refused to assimilate, meaning the Jews. Right. That the numbers were gross, grossly overestimated. That the camps were largely POWs, etc. Okay. These are the things that. I'm familiar with what Holocaust he was, denial looks correct. like. Understood. Right. And uh, well, just to and play, then, and, then, and just just, okay. just to know. Go ahead. That the the summation of my points wasn't an attack on Ryan Gable. It was a statement about this other individual being hypocritical. Because he had made previous statements regarding a, a litany of other subject matter that Ryan Gable writes books about, oh, including I see. but not limited to artificial intelligent black goo, and that those books contain forwards by individuals like Kevin Annette that are the type of people that me and this other individual had shared a common history of, of criticizing. And, and let you me just ask you this though, just, just to, just to scratch your brain here and, and, sure. you know, test to not test you, but just to see where you are with this issue here. Uh, I, I'm curious though, to ask this in your opinion though, do you think, you you can or can talk about the Holocaust though, like in in any kind of skeptical kind of way. I know it can sounds talk, kind of like can you? you can, no, no, you can. An individual can do question but, it, but but I'm saying the issue well, was when he when they went like would you say they went a little too a little too crazy? No, no, no. An individual has freedom of speech. Sure. An individual can have whatever opinion that they want to have, and they can talk about whatever they want to talk about. You can question whatever you want to question. But do you think it was the way they were doing it, would you say? That, that's the issue. Well, no, it's not only the way that, that they were they were doing it. It's, it's there's certain things that have been established, and there's certain things that there are certain lines of inquiry that have been established as as 
as false. And there are certain things like saying things like the Germans had to deal with an invading force that refused to assimilate. I mean, that's just a patently racist statement. I mean, that's that that's that, that's not saying that you're talking about, you know, talking about inquiring about a subject matter that's making, you know, yeah, that's a, that's a, statement. I've never heard that that's part. A racist statement. Yeah, that, that's a whole nother thing. I didn't even know that was that even went on. Yeah. OK, OK, I see. Understood. I mean, understood. Right. I. I mean. I, I'm just curious to know how you feel. Like, if that automatically would offend you, and it obviously it did offend you. Not me, it but me. but no, those no, people. No, no, they offended no. you though by even going there. Do you? Would you say that's fair? No. 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 I wouldn't say that that's fair because I was not offended. I saw that they were just wrong. What they had said, and then I reported it. Look. Okay. You can't uh, look. Any individual can have their beliefs, but it's like you can believe and you can think and you can say what you want to say, but you're going to you're going to have to deal with the ramifications. If you want to live in your truth, you can live in your truth, but you have to deal and accept the ramifications of the fact that, you know, there there you know, they're going to be there might be consequences for pushback or debate or discussion of those things you know especially if those things you know may be indefensible just because you can raise a question doesn't necessarily mean that there's a valid question to raise look you could say things like um you know all women are asking for it right well that's kind of crazy right that but but there are people that have said they that. do believe that yes if a woman they gets raped that, someone right? would and say well how said, yeah, yeah she she right, deserves right. yeah right you got it <laughs> you know what I mean and it is what it is but, right. and we would and, and we would interact with them and we would discuss and 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 talk about it accordingly so all that happened was it didn't offend me the the what I said was look when. I interacted with Ryan Gable yeah. in 2019. I knew shortly thereafter that he held these views in regards to the Holocaust. I don't deny the Holocaust for the record. I'm just uh, throwing but, that out there. Yeah, and, and it is what it is. And because he held those positions is why I never interacted with them. And the specific issue was that I had said, you know, in addition to other things, I said that this other individual knew or should have known that that's why I wasn't interacting with him, but it is what it is. But I gotta tell you, this whole this whole thing was, you know, a while ago. Yeah. And it is what it is. I have never, so for, for, for what it's worth, Ryan Gable or anybody is free to question whatever they want to question. Just because I believe that it is as worthless a pursuit to question the historical accuracy of, of the Holocaust as it is to question the, the scientific validity of the spherical nature of the earth doesn't mean that other people don't have the right to pursue either of those alternative points of view. But if they do, I'm going to judge them as Looney Tunes because it's not ancient history. The Holocaust is an investigated historical fact. Look, there are people that think all sorts of things. Right. And it, it, it's their look. I mean, people want to think that what they want to think. Some people believe crazy shit, people, let's be honest. There are people that are going to say, you know, you, if you think that the Holocaust is real, it's just because you're a Jewish shill or it's just because you think you believe everything they tell in the history book. Right. You weren't there. It is what it is. I think that's the me, question. Right. It's like, what do you do? Do you wake up right. in the morning and start holding on to things because you think that gravity can all of a sudden turn off because you don't know? Does, uh, you know does, what I mean? By the way, there are people that think that the moon is an artificial <laughs> satellite that was dragged into our atmosphere it's by, you know, right, the right. Iron <laughs> Ray. So you want to think that? Okay, you don't think whatever you want. You some know, people I'm do believe. Personal, right. So, some people just going to accept on, you know, the Holocaust happened. Right. They killed, uh, it wasn't six million, it was five million. They, 
like and the people sniggle about numbers. And I say, if you think that the fact that it wasn't actually six million, but it was four hundred million nine hundred ninety eight, if you think that 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 everyone's a bullshit liar because they're off by the order of a million, then if you think that the value of the human life is so meaningless that the numbers create some sort of debate, you you're racist and you got some sort of chip on your shoulder. But it's the same thing like anything. Anyone who thinks that the that the hill to die on is the Holocaust not happening is angry at some Jew for something because they perceive the Jews as running the government or something or something else. And it's just not the case. The, it's like Kanye West. Someone is off their meds somewhere. The Jews don't run everything. There's a lot more and to it, though. Way, yeah. You know what I mean? By the way, what the Israelis are, I'm a Jew. What the Israelis are doing, and a lot of other Jews agree with me, what the Israelis are doing to the to the to the Palestinians is a horrible, horrible genocide. And why are they doing it? It's because it's a cycle of violence. They're traumatized because of what? The Holocaust. Right? Israel is a country by and large populated by people that are generationally connected to people that survived a Holocaust. And so they're overreacting because all the because they knew violence and violence begets violence. Everybody needs to be in therapy. Okay, that, I don't know what to tell you. That's that's kind of my take on it. Understood. And um, does this offend you? No, not at all. I like it. I find it. I find it endearing. I like it personally. Why wouldn't I? And sometimes I play it here on the program. You should, as you should. I actually, you know, I, I sometimes bring up like, you know, like Gene Simmons and I just say, ooh, look at that Jew face. He's Israeli. Exactly. And uh, by the way, I have lots of uh, Jewish listeners out there. They love when I say that. Uh, so, yeah, you know, being satirical, having fun, everyone kind of knows we're joking around. But there are people out there that really do have uh, like they really they're really serious about the anti-Jew thing, you know, they get really, oh, yeah, they, are. they get really angry. Of course they do. Yeah. I, I don't understand those people that the ones that get really, really violent about it. It's crazy. No, what you get violent. I, look, you can't win for losing. I tell people all the time, I'm a very progressive guy and I know I'll be canceled by the left. You can't win. You really look, can't. Not these I days. identify myself, myself as Jewish, but guess what? Because, because I, because my mother wasn't converted there's some people that say I'm not a Jew, even though I had a bar mitzvah. You can't win from losing. There are That's people true. that will say that I'm not really Jewish because yeah, I you're not a real yeah, you're Israel. not a real there Jew. They would say <laughs> there are Christians that that say that I'm anti-Semitic. Oh no, because I don't stand with what's happening with what Israel is responding to with Palestine. Oh boy, it's just you can't win from losing. Oh, you can't but though. All 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 that you can do is is do your best to try and understand, try and love people. I love Ryan Gable. I love the guy that sued me. I, 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 if I identify someone as, as, as a Holocaust denier, it doesn't mean that I say they're a Holocaust denier so that they should be burnt, put in the ovens themselves. I say, no, I say, Ooh. I think that they're wrong about this, this historical event. I think that they, they're misguided. I was going to say, do you think it's like a misguided uh, anger sort of thing? I think it's definitely, if, if you are, if you are able to believe that the Holocaust didn't happen, and if you think that that's a big deal and a big issue, there's something going on. Everyone who thinks a lot of these general conspiracy theory believers, depending on the depth or the degree to which they dive into the various conspiracy theories that they dive into, sometimes, not everyone, depending, look, conspiracies are real. Right, they happen. People are disappeared by government. You know what I mean? Governments were involved in drug trades. You know, conspiracies happen. Right. Oliver North, you know what I mean? People were involved in the rent contra thing. You know, people, conspiracies do occur. Yeah, people I'm, get arrested for them. That, that to, to, believe, to be a conspiracy theorist means you're a, you're, a, you're a jackass or something. But oftentimes, people's over, over, over involvement in various conspiracies and the various conspiracy theories that they can become overly attached to may sometimes indicate 
past traumas or, or past things that they may be overly attached to. Do you also, uh, do you also in reference this to maybe like a, a cliff high of sorts? Oh, cliff high is, is on some other, other thing now. I mean, that's, you know, I knew he was never like that before. I don't know what happened to he him. Wasn't. There, there's been a, there's been a distinct there's been a change. change. <laughs> there's been a change. I, 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 had, I had a strong emotional reaction to cliff highs sudden weird change and transformation I, I interviewed him many years ago and he was not like this he, i used to hang out with cliff high on the phone i used to we did we did interviews together we did discussions together and it must have been i don't it know it must have been you was, i don't know you were the problem we were, we were co-defendants it was you it was, it was you you're guilty <laughs> It wasn't your me. fault. I'll tell you, it couldn't have been me. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> yes, sir. We were co-defendants. You know what I really think it was? The only thing that I could possibly think it was, was the whatever happened with yeah. Bitcoin. Oh, I see. I see. Remember, there was that, that if we go to when Boogie 29188 or whatever. The blockchain to, and the Bitcoin. The blockchain yes, was, and all that stuff. Right. It must have been that because prior to that, he was the happiest dude seemed, in the world. He seemed he normal. Really normal. Yeah, I was going to say he seems very angry these days. He's gone off the reservation in a lot of different ways. And he's saying stuff that is. And today, just before we started this interview, the latest thing, I don't know how this is going to track with his audience. There's a there's a video of an African-American student slapping a white female teacher and Cliff High retweeted it and said, basically like a sign of hyper novelty is these students realizing that authority figures have no, he's basically saying like, hey, teacher, leave these kids alone. <laughs> like basically, and I'm like, what? Say yeah. what the fuck? I was like, I was like, you're on some shit, bro. Well, he might but, be he might be taking some pills. He's of that age. I unfortunately, I think what's happening is that he's not taking enough pills. The right, the yeah, right he's ones, not yeah. Taking the right pills. You might be right about that. And you know, look, I mean, he's he identifies himself as a as a multiple cancer survivor, and I think that maybe he's. I don't know what's I when he was well allegedly as well as he ever was. He would say the most outlandish, crazy stuff. But like we said, there are some people that say outlandish, crazy stuff, but it's not the kind of outlandish, crazy stuff that's going to get anyone hurt. So love you, Cliff. But then he started saying stuff that was just. Well, it's a little stuff. out there. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I'm, we're, I'm guilty of the same thing. Uh, I'm saying all kinds of outrageous things myself, but. Again, everyone knows that we're, we're having fun. No, no, you're not saying outrageous. I don't think you're saying outrageous things like he's saying. Outrageous yeah, that's things. another different level. He's saying he's saying outrageous things like you wouldn't believe. I, I, I was, and I, yeah, I've been reading every now and then, but uh, yeah, he's it seems oh. little, a little fucking crazy these days. Yo, he say <laughs> things like he say things like um, the the Jewish enclaves in upstate New York are going to be surrounded by people coming out of New York City to burn them down. I remember he that said, he was he did say he tweeted something like that if I recall. He said he said he said affirmatively that he took out one of his stalkers, which would basically be an admission to killing somebody. It's just not, it's just it's just he's just he's just on some other stuff. He's sort of losing he's his mind. That, it sounds like. He's saying that the legislators are going to start making laws that you can't have dual citizenship with Israel and that Israelis can't have government, can't have uh, businesses. I'm saying basically like he's saying things like they're like the Nuremberg law. It's just, it's just he has gone full, full yeah, bananas. He's gone full tar. But, but you know what? The thing is, this we talked about this like the. The, the thing is this, is that the number of people that have based their stuff on his stuff, that's where it kind of gets nuts. The amount of people that have like basically kind of uh, co-signed on him, that's going to be funny. And there's because, been a lot, by the way. 
oh yeah like jay widener is like his is basically like is like cliff on cliff on that's cliff another on, guy on, by the way you know he, he's been on the program as well and on his personal facebook he's been taking shots at uh cory good well, yeah, but he's another co-defendant. He's another guy that's that that basically, according to Corey Good, me, him, and me, Cliff High, Correct, and, yes. and Jay Widener, and some triumvirate, and me, Cliff High, and Jay, and Jay Widener. There couldn't be more. There's no relation. Between us, then I go after Jay all the time. It's isn't that kind I of funny? After, it's hysterical. It's like your your enemies uh, getting sued as well. I have no enemies. I'm not but, Jay's enemy. I just don't. I, agree I know. With I know. Him as I, far as, 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 I know. As Jay's position as be, like Jay's the, the Jay has affirmatively said that basically the Germans were the good guys in World War II. <laughs> I was using that term lightly, by the way. Uh, no, I know. You know what but, I mean? Um, it's like, we, we always have to clarify because here's the thing we got to understand. I know that you have the intelligence to understand things like nuance, subtlety, context humor but this goes even with your limited reach your self-deprecating defined limited reach there are going to be people out there be like they're enemies exactly and yeah then, yeah and then there's other people that are going to be like yeah the guy yeah the holocaust didn't happen listen listen michael deacon Lynn is jew say things like the holocaust <laughs> and the germans weren't the good guys we all know the germans are the good guys Cliff High's right. Who am I going to subscribe to? Cliff High. Oh, yeah, we're, you're going to hear a lot of that, I'm, I'm sure, after this is um, done. Uh, but that's okay. I mean, people could believe whatever they want. This is a free country. And it's all will. good. It's all good. It's all good. It's not, believe you me, I, I have no problem. Do you know what I mean? It is what it is. You know what I mean? I'm, you know, check out my... If it wasn't for people um, threatening my life for being Jewish... I would have basically you gone threats because you're um, Jewish. Yeah, well, that's like my main uh, Twitter interaction. They go, is, "You're a Jew, and you should die." Basically, basically yeah. Wow. And for that reason, wow. I wouldn't say it's like my main thing. It's de it's definitely it's definitely uh, a source of my uh, Twitter interaction. I wouldn't want to see it go. I would lose a lot of my uh, my. Uh, my algorithmic feed. That's right. You know, I, I say things like, uh, you know, on the program, I, we, we talk about different conspiracies of that nature. And sometimes, you know, of course, Mossad gets brought up, you know, and people get a little charged up, you know. Some people believe if I say things like that, they think I'm like attacking every Jewish person out there. That's no, that's no, no, no. like Israel. Israel is an apartheid state. I don't like the I don't like the right wing government of Israel. And believe you me, like the Mossad, the KGB, the CIA. I don't like police. I don't like any of those guys. Yeah, and there's so a lot of there's a lot of people that Trump. and there's a lot of uh, listeners that are actually a Jewish, and some of them actually live there in Israel. Believe it or not. And right. you know they, they love the show. They laugh. They agree with a lot of it. You know, I say this all the time. I, I don't like a lot of the governments out there, no matter which country it is. You I don't know, like any of the I love. Yeah, exactly. I don't really care for most of the governments, but I care about the people. Really, that's yeah, that's what I care about. Aka the good people. Yeah, the good guys. Like you know, no, absolutely. It wasn't a great back in the day when conspiracy theories were governments. Exactly. Bad. The people good. good. And now we have people that are like thinking that conspiracy theory stands for voting, you know, going for one type of police uh, yeah, state yeah. or government than the other. Crazy. It, it, we live in a crazy world right now, you know. Uh, people yeah, yeah. really, people have a lot of faith in political figures. And I, I've never been one to um, worship these false idols. You know, I'm not into the whole, I, I love talking politics. I like making fun of it. I like discussing it. But there are those people that really believe in the whole voting system and all that bullshit. They are suckered into that. It's pretty sad, but people still buy into that fake uh, patriotism bullshit. And and how it's always been my my whole thing with voting has always been lesser of two evils. That's the only reason I vote. But isn't it isn't it sad though that all Americans they not all Americans but a good demographic they say what you just said the lesser of the two evils and the fact that we even acknowledge that these are evil scumbags kind of says it all yeah well look i mean it's it's 
it's the way that it is and and like and, uh, and you know you're of an older generation so, you know i'm a little bit younger but we're still both part of that generation where we didn't like government or guys in these suits you know we were you know kind of punk rock we don't really like uh, the authority and nowadays it seems like the people that were like punk rock they're all about authority you see they're so far left nowadays you know the satanists the punk rockers they're far left nowadays would you agree with me on that or do you think that's not fair to to say to some degree well i don't know necessarily you know left or right you know there are people on like fat mike you know you got you got that kind of punk rock kind of guy you know you see a lot of these people some of them again some of them are like goth folks satanists and they're they lean really far left well are you I would actually identify most Satanists as being on the right, which which I don't necessarily like. I mean, if you think about the the black metal scene, most people who talk about black metal, a lot of leftists in in the scenes uh, have an issue with uh, right wing extremism and right. black metal and stuff. And you also have a, you know, there's you know, say nothing about. Are you referring to you know, Vorg like, from uh, Mayhem? Yeah, well, and beyond that, I mean, there's just been a long history of identification with with right wing nationalism and black metal right, scenes. Right, true. But, you You're know right what, that. what that might be telling is that if, hmm. if if I'm identifying things as leaning too right and you're identifying things as, as too left, it goes to show you that you 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 see what aggravates you. You know what I mean? Maybe, possibly. I wouldn't say it aggravates me at all. It's just uh, it's just what I. It's just my perspective from the outside. Uh, I've never been one that identifies with anyone. I like to view myself as the outsider of sorts. Because I don't, I don't like uh, any of these uh, groups uh, wholeheartedly. Well, you know, I mean, we... I'm not into it. Well, I think that... My, views, problem... are, my, my views are too far out there. I mean, I, the left, the people on the left don't like me. The people on the right don't like me. You know, my, well, viewpoints, good... are, my viewpoints are a little extreme. Like, you know, I wish... I wish you would have uh, to get like a license to breed uh, and like a psych test and a psych test to uh, drive. I mean, I would want more restriction on, on certain things and a little looser on other things that would not comply to what our Christian brothers want. And maybe or even our atheist uh, friends would want to a certain degree. It would be out of the means, out of the bounds of, of actualization, actual this sort of idea coming to fruition. So I would be, I'm a little too out there for uh, both left and the right, to be honest. Well, that's actually kind of right-wing positions. If you want a, a sort of right government, I don't know, actually. You know what? I, it really, you know, here's the thing. I'm all over the place, I guess. You, well, you are. Well, everyone is. So here's the thing. That's why I can't bow down to either left or right, though, my friend. And it leaves me in a weird place. We're all in a weird place. Here's <laughs> right. where I'm going with this. Go ahead. Here's where I'm going with this. We're, we're given two boxes. We're given the illusion of two boxes. We're told there's a left and there's a right. Right. And we're told there's a, a, a red and a blue. And we're taught to, to identify ourselves and that people are identifiable as one of these two things. But the reality is, is that left to our own devices and given enough time to fully develop and describe to each other what our beliefs are. All of us are none of these colors. We're all rainbows. Be careful, because I know that that you know certain people think rainbows are a bad name. Uh oh, um, but you know what I mean. Like we're all, if given the time to fully explain, without fear of offending or retribution from who we think we're supposed to be. Hopefully, if given the time to fully express ourselves would find ourselves not fitting in any box. But we're given these black and white, blue and red uh, identifier tags. And we're taught to view the world in these easy to identify generalizations. Yeah, under this lens of sorts. Under these lenses. So, and then in interviews, you know, the, the interview is given by Fat Mike or by, you know, uh, Michael Graves, you know, for one time singer of, of uh, The Misfits. He might and, be on the show, by the way. 
good, you know, and then and then we're and then the the, the, the interviews clipped. I'll question him though about a, for a few things. Right. Yeah, don't worry, I'll, and I'll then, ask. Uh, and then and then we're presented with an image of people as being on the left or on the right or this or that or the other thing, and it's all mediated and it's and it's all um, an illusion, you know, and it's and and you realize then that. that you know, Lincoln was a Republican, and the the people that stood against the civil rights movement in the South were were Democrats. But in that span of time, what a Republican is and what a Democrat is has changed, and so it means nothing to say that Lincoln was a Republican. And it means nothing to say that the people that stood against the civil rights movement were Democrats, because all of those Democrats within a year had switched to being Republicans. It's 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 a game. It's all a game. And, you know, people oftentimes, you know, it's very rare that we find people that even know probably what they really believe. Most people, when asked, might very well end up giving the answers that they think they're supposed to give as to what their thoughts and beliefs are about this, then the other thing. And we see, we see, if you go down yeah, you south- you see that all the time. Yeah, you, you see like people say, I'm a, they'll profess to being a Christian and then, then they'll say the most vile awful and violent things, yeah. things and awful things in regards to, they're far from loving. Or some people are, so, yeah, some people aren't cognizant that there's- Not cognizant that, at all. There, there's a, well, I mean, they're not cognizant of, there's a private opinion and a public opinion. They don't, they don't, they haven't come to that realization yet, by the way, the, the people that watch the, the little black box every day, every night. You don't need the blue black box to, to be full of self-deception. There are plenty of people that might be, in fact, there might be plenty of people who love themselves for being like, I don't even watch TV. Oh, there's, yeah, as there's if, some, yeah, there's some people like that. As if that is some sort of guard against being full of self-deception or not being, you know, plugged into the matrix, as they say. Of, hypocrisy right yeah. right right yeah those that want to disconnect from the matrix uh, unplug as they say you know the the ones the the hipster kids out there you know the ones with uh their their parents money you see them you in la by the way they're the, the, they're the ones that go to the the contact in the desert the conscious life expo in la those are the um those are the the kids you see all those hippies out there i'm sure you've seen them a lot of them are like trust fund kids by the way Oh yeah, it takes, <laughs> listen. It, it takes a lot of money to Good ascend. Times. It takes a lot of money. It takes a lot, a lot of money. Oh yeah. To not care. To open your third okay. eye. No. It takes a lot of Absolutely. money to open that third eye, bro. Absolutely. <laughs> what you think? You think weed is free? Come on. That's now, true. Baby. Oh yeah, this, that's a weird scene. Yeah, it's a very strange scene, and. Um... Sometimes I get invited to go to those scenes and I'm there and I'm just thinking, you know, this is a mistake. The big mistake being here. <laughs> yeah, but hey, I have fun though. I have fun though. It's it's you know, cool. You save yourself, this is a big mistake. That's how you know you're on the right track. It's like I'm fun. at a carnival, you know, it's a good time. You gotta see the animals. You do, you do, absolutely, without a doubt. But not everyone has that perspective, and that's why they get deceived by these uh folks in these talk circuits. And I'm telling you, there's another one already getting uh, getting uh, propped up for this. By the way, this uh, no, Enoch what? gentleman. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, look, it, 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 there's oh Johnny Enoch. That's right. He's getting propped up. Is he's, he's big he, time now? It happens. He's gonna get up there. He's taking all those um, all those spots out there as uh, being the host, the MC. Oh, that's right. That's right. What happened to uh, someone got passed over? Who was the guy? It was um, that was Jimmy Church. No, there was Jimmy Church, but there was um, I'm not thinking of who got passed over. There was a guy. That there was, was another guy. Uh, Ishmael uh, Perez. I'm trying to remember. Do you remember Ishmael Perez? Ishmael Perez. There was a, yeah. There was a one gentleman like that. I remember. Yeah, he was. I thought he was going to be the next uh, guy. Well, Emery was going to be the next guy too, but look what happened to him. Well, yeah, you, you know what I mean? Whatever happened to him? Is he still around? What happened to him? Emery, I think, is no longer uh, uh, around. He's done. I think that I think that whole thing's over. 
It's as over as that other guy, that Jordan Seether character. Well, Jordan, oh, really? That I, guy, I, I don't know where. That... I don't know what happened to him, but I don't think he's around either. You know, it's funny. The last time I saw Jordan, uh, what's his face, is that I, Cliff High had rebroadcast an interview that he did with uh, Jordan. Ah. And I knew it was like, it was like when you see people that like used to talk shit about each other do an interview together. Oh, because, that's awkward. Because Jordan used to tear <laughs> into Cliff High because Jordan was on team other guy. Ah. So it was like, holy crap. It's like when you saw um, Sammy Hagar go on tour with David Lee Roth. Right. And you were like, what? Oh, it's like that. It's like huh? that. It is kind of okay. like that. Right? Dang. Okay, son. So I was like, holy but yeah, you know what I mean? Everyone's on Rumble, right? Everyone's got to go find a place to go. But I, you know what I mean? It was, what, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know what happened was, uh, you know, the letter that dare not speak its name. You have all those people that invested in the magic letter. And then, uh, you know, it's like. Ah, um, uh, yes, Q. Yeah. Well, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to uh, spoil, you know, some people are, are still feel as though it has magic algorithmic. Uh, oh my they, goodness. Uh, no, no, no. There's no power in that. But, okay. uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's over with, but yeah, a lot of people out there are still very much into, uh, the QAnon, you know, they like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause remember Jordan Sather had, uh, <laughs> yeah, he was he big was, into uh, it. it. He got on comedy central. That was a great gig to get. Here's a hot tip kids. If you ever get called up by comedy central to do like the daily show or whatever, and it's not explicitly like you're not a movie star out there to promote like a new movie or book. Don't go because they're going to make fun of you. Absolutely. And that's what happened. And you're not going to be able to spin it. There's no way to win. They're the ones in the editing bay. They're the ones that are going to like, you know, do you, do, there's no way to win, you know? That's Dang. true. So wow. I guess he went all those people that over invested in uh, the letter Q, like Sesame, they went down like Elmo on Sesame Street. Well, I mean, man. it's a good, it's a good thing he didn't end up in Nickelodeon, by the way. Oh, that, yeah, exactly. You know, he'd you end know up, I mean? he'd end up in Nickelodeon two thousand four with Dan Schneider. Oof, oof. You just, uh, you just referenced two thousand four. So uh, I'm saying those were like the glory days of uh, Dan Schneider. Those Dan, the glory old days of Dan <laughs> Schneider. Oh, Talking my. about guys who don't work anymore. Is he still? I, I'm sure he could still find work, though, right? I don't think he's worked since 2000 and whenever, because and it's like people that, like my you know. But does he that, really that have to? The, but but does that documentary just started making the the quiet, rounds. yeah quiet on the set? But do you you know what? I don't even think he probably even has to work anymore. To be honest with you, I think that guy has acquired a tremendous amount of wealth. I, I that guy probably has like jeffrey epstein money like probably even yeah, more like than at what cost like i think well because here's the thing is like the, the thing about that documentary is that like so my ex-wife wife saw it come on and she was like oh my god i can't believe all this stuff went down and i'm like girl what you have to understand is that like i knew about like a lot of people already knew about this stuff like 10 years ago right oh, yeah. it's just getting to the mainstream they just decided to, to take this out of the out of the closet again so I'm like, just when Dan Schneider was getting to the point being like, I think I've lost enough weight. You know what I mean? Like I've combed my hair and cut right. it down. I think start going back out in public again. He's like, I guess not. It's like, no matter how much money you got, like how much money do you need to like never leave your house again? Like, well, holy he's, shit. He's got it. Dang. Even still, man, I guess you you must like taken because just hide the house. his life is just uh, ordering things online, basically. Yeah. And visiting like what Britney Spears sister's kid. I think it was that the rumor that it's his, I guess. Is that, that the deal? I don't know what is going on there. That's what, uh, uh, yeah. Britney is. Spears is younger sister for those who don't know what we're talking about. Allegedly there is a, an abortion or, well, actually in a kid rather. I think it's a kid or a yeah. kid. Yeah of uh britney spears's younger sister Ooh, and what what is even going on with that amanda Bynes? by the way that poor poor girl she's well she's turned her life around i think she's studying to be uh uh like a nail and hair, oh, yeah. a nail and beauty technician i see which is a step in the right direction i mean that's like that's like putting your life together that's like getting a job right it's true well 
it's it's interesting sort of a turn of events these uh, kids and what they had to endure but uh cw my friend i do want to uh thank you for being a part of the program i don't want i hate to take up too much of your time (laughs) you'll end up on a high note there yes i I mean that's the way you do it but you know we we leave them wanting more that's the way i think about it but yes it's been two it's been a little bit over two hours so i think we gave them enough and uh, of course i'll bring you back on and we could discuss other matters as uh, things come to light here uh, but yeah, my friend, thank you so much for being a part of the program. Uh, go ahead and plug anything you'd like before we cut you loose. Listen, if you got the links, do with them what you want. It is what it is. I am who I am. I've got nothing to plug except you know my existence on planet Earth. And thank you, guys. Listen, I'll plug Michael Deacon show. Thank you so much for having me on. And uh, really yes, this thank you, thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. And yes, uh, conversation. You know uh, what I mean? I'll let them know that you'll be at Contact in the Desert this year. CW Channer, the main speaker, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. I'll be be there. there. (laughs) I'll be be cosplaying as Michael Enoch. There you go. Michael Enoch. I like that. Absolutely. I might change my name to that now. (laughs) I will listen. Wow. A, a, A modern day Michael Enoch. Ooh, I like that one. There you go. Patent pending. Patent pending.